to talk more? Yes. Yeah. Keep talking more. Okay, yeah. talking more. I love talking, talking, Don't talking, turn talking. Away. Don't turn away from me. I feel like there's a song in there or something. Don't turn away from me. That's a little too much. Don't turn away from the microphone. The microphone. Yeah. 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 Well, if you think if if you think um, Nathan sounds a little different this week, it's because he's actually a different person. (laughs) (laughs) We've taken on an alternate persona. Yeah, reduced our listenership by fifty percent in the process. Unless, (laughs) (laughs) wait, is that he's been assimilated into the podcast? Is that our future? We evolve. We no, just for one week, we're reducing our listenership by fifty percent. That's he can still listen to the podcast afterwards. I Do suppose. I? I mean, if you want. I mean, we <laughs> listen to our own podcast, so. Just in case you guys get any funny ideas, not everyone gets to be on the podcast because they listen to us. Just John, because he has something to add. Hello, well, John. This hello. is John, by the way. He's have our, we started? Yes. Oh, okay. we're going. Cool. Here Hi, John. Hi, I'm, John. I am. I'm one of the two listeners. Yes, he is one of the two listeners. <laughs> yes. Um, and as a reward for his good and faithful service. And because he's got a lot to say on a certain topic. But we'll get to that. that. He gets to be on the podcast. I yes. get to be on the, the podcast. And I don't if have you have any... cool things to say, hit us up. Hit us up. <sighs> and we can have you come in as a guest. Although hopefully Nathan will be there next time. And then I get Canadian whiskey that is Pretty also bad, saying but fine. It's It's whiskey. It was twenty dollars for a one point seven five liter. It's not that great. Pendleton is probably the best Canadian whiskey that I've had. You know, I might need the the uh, what do you call it after this? The the Fireball after this. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than Fireball. Come on. <laughs> You're right. You're right. It is sipping. Everything whiskey. is better than Fireball. <laughs> yeah. If you're drunk enough. Nope. No, if you're not Just drunk. Period. Enough. Just period. Okay. Just, uh, fireball well, is just bad in every circumstance. Unless you're ice fishing. Unless you're ice fishing. Or. Bends rough around the edge of friends. <laughs> if yeah. you have unsweetened apple cider to add to it and then heat it up, then you have hot, hot whiskey. Too late. Apple, apple cider. pie? Apple kind of. Pie. Oh, I was going to make some apple pie for the camping apple trip, but apple I never apple did. Apple oh. pie. I mean, that would have been pretty dope, but it was kind of hot for apple pie, I feel like. We didn't also didn't have any Captain Applejack or whatever. Well, he said he couldn't, he find, couldn't it. find it. Well, yeah, he can't ever find it again. Yeah, that's sad. I think he got it at like a church bazaar of all things. Yeah. <laughs> How bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Carlton, I think he said. Yeah. That's kind of, I kind of want to find that now because I got pretty happy on that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> just passing it around the fire. And I took big swigs and just kind of held it in my mouth for a long time. Yeah. And I think three or four big swigs later, stargazing got very fun. Woo! Well, <laughs> stargazing is always fun. That's true. But Depending when you're trying to focus on, on a star. Who you are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to look at that one. We're not advocating drunkenness in case anyone's getting That ideas. one. I wasn't really drunk. I was just feeling it. That one. I'm are you really feeling it. I'm really oh. feeling it. Art thou feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? <laughs> <laughs> Do you I'm want to tell us a little a bit about spot. yourself, John? Uh, about myself? Yes, you. Um, you? you want my whole life story? I mean, well, you know I, I don't know. What do you want but... podcast listener to know? Uh, well, I... Uh, that she doesn't already know. I am... Definitely doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, there's, there's another listener besides the two of Maybe. them. Maybe. Maybe. Kind of. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Are you an alleged listener? I'm allegedly. <laughs> well, uh, we know that John listens because he talks to us about what we talk about. Yeah. So. Yeah. So joke's on you. Yeah. Anyway. Well. And the other listener is John's girlfriend. Yes. Faith, so. Yes. And the other maybe alleged listener would be our, well, my soon-to-be roommate. But Uh-oh. Anyway. Replacing me. Yeah. Oh like yeah. I was wondering who's Which is happening, by you. the way. Which is pretty much happening. Pretty much happening. Yeah. Hooray for Riley. Hooray. So odds like John 
if you want, we can have you sub every so often because Riley's... Riley will be a busy boy. Yeah. Although we'll, Riley's not permanently leaving the podcast, we hope. Why are you I'm gonna... not leaving the podcast right, I'm a, right. if I'm a busy boy. Are you yeah. going to do it through the interwebs? Yeah, we're going to yeah. have to. I'm not going to drive up to Minnesota from Indiana every week. To no. And not... The podcast. Well, that and sounds like a good time, though. But that's a lot of driving, though. <laughs> that's like... That's like 15 hours of driving one way. Anyway, tell us about yourself, John. About myself. Um, Well, my name is John. Hello, John. I am one of the two listeners of this (laughs) podcast. Um, And... What do you do, John? What do I do? I like to party. No, wait. <laughs> <laughs> that's my I'm, life. I'm James, and I like to party. No, 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 we <laughs> no, can't no, no. all we can't party. All be parties. <laughs> I watched that with Faith that last week. We were well, we Hot were rod. camping. We were just, what did she think of it? Well, she had already seen it, and oh, then okay. uh, we were just looking. We were tired, and we were like, she was like, let's go, let's find a movie to watch and not do anything <laughs> else tonight. <laughs> Like, okay, cool. Sounds good. And then we searched for like a half hour and I was like, we're not going to watch just any old movie. I have to go, <gasps> ooh, let's watch that one. And then uh, that that was the one that I saw that I was like, ooh, let's watch that one. And <laughs> we watched Hot Rod. So. Yeah, it was uh, like Amazon Prime, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I have it. It's, I own it. It's good. It's a good time. It's a good movie. But uh, anyway. Probably not going to be an episode, but <laughs> no. There's nothing to say. About, there's <laughs> yeah, nothing really to say not. about hot rod. There's nothing for deep. Hot word. Hot rod. There's nothing deep about it. <laughs> Good night, Denise. <laughs> that goes anyway. 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 Keep getting off track. Uh, hey, welcome to this podcast. Thank you. Um, do you want me to say anything more about what do myself? you do, John? Oh, I well, I uh, I teach young children. I suppose. Uh, <laughs> I'm a preschool teacher. Ah. <laughs> uh, so um i also how did we meet how did we meet oh we met through the newman center james Uh don't you remember we were neighbors we were neighbors at one time now both of our homes are rubble and dirt to make the the seed that was sown to that had to die and make way for not being broken into and uh a new newman center the wheat that has fallen to the ground yeah and died it was a yellow house it was it was the yellow house yeah and now i live across the street from its grave (laughs) (laughs) made a long sojourn of exile away from your former home all the way across the street all the way across Well, there was a stop in between there was but where were you (laughs) i was at my parents for oh that's right that's right (laughs) almost moved in with us but then you wanted to but then flaked but then some other guy who sometimes Some hears this co- this uh, podcast. So. <laughs> he doesn't own anything on which to listen to it. <laughs> Actually, though, it's kind of funny. Good for him, though. Nor can he listen to it at work because it's the same place as John, and there's no work <laughs> computers. That's true. Oh, I listen to it sometimes on the way to work. I listen to podcasts on the way to work, mm-hmm. and once a week it's this podcast. So There we go. There we go. Look at us providing for your needs. Mm-hmm. Are you... Uh, Still in school, John? <laughs> <coughs> Some might say. I uh, have the experience like I have a degree. I just don't have the piece of paper yet. But uh, that's the only thing in the way. It's a technicality. It's a technicality. I can do the job. I just, no one believes me. <laughs> Please. You still have student teaching left to do. Yes. Basically, Not Besides preschool teaching, like yeah. actual student teaching. Yeah, that's my just my job. Music education, correct? Music education, yeah. There we go. He's going to be, be your favorite teacher someday. Some sort of musical teacher, maybe band. I can do anything technically, but I don't I want to do I can do anything, anything better than you. <laughs> you can. Yeah. Probably do no, something you can't. with yes, elementary. Can. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't there like, an, like a Tide ad or something like that way back in the day that they it's used that? Tide- yeah, like they use it was like some sort of detergent ad. They did that, that the little musical bit you just sang there. I remember because my sister and I used to watch it, like hear it on TV, and then we'd be like doing that back and forth at each other. Anyway, anyway, yeah, I uh, had a interesting morning <laughs> this morning working with children. Not not well, not just that. Before this, uh huh. So this morning, so my phone has like where even is that? Oh, it's right here. 
I have a Galaxy, and oh. uh, it has this SOS feature on it. If what? You, sauce? Apparently. Oh, no. If you That's press right. if you press the power button three times really fast, it'll it sends out an uh, an SOS to oh. like predetermined emergency contacts. Oh no! Which I didn't even remember that I set up, but apparently oh. I set it up. <laughs> so this morning, uh, I was I got a, an interesting alarm clock this morning. <laughs> I uh, heard a, a pounding on the door. <laughs> and FBI, a, John! John! <laughs> I'm like, what is going on? At first, I thought it was just the, the construction guys outside just yelling at each other. And the, But I was like, are they saying my name? <laughs> like, what is going on? All of a sudden, I hear walking up the stairs. And then all of a sudden, whoosh, my dad crashes <laughs> through, the, <laughs> through my bedroom w- door. <laughs> Is it he's like, locked? All right, no. Okay, okay. <laughs> but he was like, he's like, if the door was locked, I was ready to break it down. It's like, what? <laughs> I was like, what's going on? He's like, you sent an SOS. It said you needed help. And I'm like, I didn't do any of that. And then I looked at my phone. He said, sending out SOS. And I'm like, apparently my mom, my dad got that. And then, uh... And Dan got one. <laughs> did Dan just ignore it? Yeah. <laughs> of course he did. And then, and then the other person who listens to this podcast got oh. one as well. Oh but my. she didn't say anything either. <laughs> She's probably just like, mm, he's yeah. fine. <laughs> uh, but at least it wasn't like emergencies. Like I was expecting like a cop to like come through the door. No, you? thank goodness. <laughs> but it like it like tells your exact location, takes some pictures and records some audio. So it was just like the inside of your pocket or something? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, no, it was the side of my bed. It didn't take a picture of me, thankfully. It was all black because oh. it was dark. But <laughs> Well, I feel like if it was taking a picture of you in bed, they probably just would be like, okay, whatever. Yeah, but like, <laughs> if it was all black. He's like, I don't understand. My dad. He's like, I just got all these black black images. I'm, like, I'm in a trunk. Help! <laughs> in yeah. the middle of my bedroom. Well, it, the, it told my exact location, so it said I was at home. So, <laughs> what are you gonna do if you're actually like need that? It's just gonna be like the boy who cried wolf. Well, yeah. okay. So the my boy mom who said, cried presses button three times. <laughs> my mom said you have to. You're no longer allowed to keep your phone next to your bed. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't do that anyway. But my, I have a I have a loft, so I don't really have anywhere to put. I don't have like a bedside to put it. <sighs> well, I well I, you I, should put it across the room so you're not tempted to look at it. Right, but it's also my alarm clock. That's why it should be across the room, so it entices you to get out of bed to go turn it off. Uh, That's just annoying. (laughs) Yeah, I used to do that, but now I don't have to get up until noon, because that's when I work. (laughs) You're lame. I usually get up at... I have to work at like... Like 7 or Well, 8.30 is not really that early. But... I'm done working tomorrow. That's right. As of this podcast, Riley will have been done with his job, and... Spending a little, are you, did you take like PTO at the end or are you just done? No, I'm just done. Early oh, okay. retirement. Yeah. <laughs> about, you're about 30 years too early. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, happy retirement, Riley. Thank you. <laughs> sort of. As, as we all know, seminarians don't do any work whatsoever. None. Except for on Sundays, of course. Yes. Except for it's just, Sundays. you only worked once a week, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's how that goes. Of course. Um, oh, it's kind of funny. Some priests are busier when they retire. I remember it was an old Irish priest. He's like, you know, I should come out of retirement so I don't have to work so much. Who, <laughs> Father, who is that? Father Irish, Hughes. Are you talking about the Irish priest at Mass? Last no. Oh. no. No, no. Father, he he <laughs> passed away <laughs> like five, six years ago. <laughs> he he passed away like five, six years ago. Oh. But he was like rector at the cathedral for like a long time. So, so. insensitive. Yeah. Wow, so John. uncivilized. Uncivilized. So uncivilized. Oh, we've also been, me and Faith have been watching the prequels for Star Wars this week. Oh, wow. She hasn't seen them. What? So, she's seen the original trilogy. She just hasn't seen the prequels. It's really fun because she's never seen them. And I love seeing when her you, when genuine you, reactions. What, the, the Anakin scene in episode two? Yeah. <laughs> Sand. We just got that. <laughs> <laughs> well, she didn't even react to that. I she just got she reacted to all the jump scares to me 
but to me, I'm like, I've been seeing this. I know this, this is coming. I've seen, I've this, seen this 20 times. billion times. Obi-Wan's getting captured. Oh, since no. Since I was a wee boy. Has she seen the original trilogy? Yeah. She, I, oh, okay. just, just said that, that she did. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there was the, the, that one scene when they're on Geonosis, and then Padme gets scratched on the back by the, the, the alien cat. Yeah. Mm. And she's like, <gasps> <laughs> I'm like, She's fine. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you haven't seen this. <laughs> yeah, it would have been way more interesting if that actually injured her somehow. Well, yeah, you'd think it would. Like nine, like eight-inch long claws, you'd think that's would do a, paralyzed, a little more. Those are paralyzed legs right there. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> She's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Oh, well. We're not talking about Star Wars today, though. Not Star Wars. Plot armor. <sighs> we are talking about something that came from kind of the same time frame-ish. Did it? No. When did it come out? Well, it was... What? 2008, 9? It's probably somewhere in there. I was probably in middle school. I'm going to Google this again. Okay, Jamie, Google. pull it up. Yeah. <laughs> um. It came out in 2005. Oof. 2005. That's February 21st. Well, that's episode 3. Yeah, episode 3 came out in 2005. So, so, yeah. Five, 2005 through 7. Nickelodeon. Yes. We're talking about Avatar The Last Airbender. We're talking We're the Plenty and Papists. I'm James. I'm Riley. And this is John. And John's here, too. I'm yes. John. <laughs> Nathan is away on a family reunion. The temporary weekend. rip. Nathan. Yes. <laughs> temporary rip. Temporary F. Temp, temp rip. I got to figure out how I can hold my notes. Properly. John John is a big boy fan of Avatar. So I, I mean, I am too. But I am getting into it. I am. I want to say probably halfway through season one. Halfway. Yes. Slightly okay. over. There's yeah. 20 episodes a season. Okay. And you're on like 11. So. I thought it was on like 14, but I'll have to go back and check. But anyway, Yee. John's gonna. We're gonna talk about Avatar today. Not guys, blue people. Just guys, no, no, not no, no, no. Blue people. Not the blue people. If no. you, it's either the good one. Or the not good one. The blue people is the not good one. When it's you're talking the, about the, Avatar, the, the blue it's people is Pocahontas. <laughs> James Literally Cameron, Pocahontas, Alien yeah. Pocahontas, or The Last Samurai, depending on how you want to look at it. Yes. It's much more like Pocahontas. Yeah. Yes. They what there fight is in the Last Samurai, the True. main character. Well, anyway, go on. Of Avatar: The Last Airbender does have blue. Just arrows a, on his head on his head and, and his, his arms hands. and his oh yeah does he have it on his feet i think so i think he does i'm not quite sure but uh i have everything changed when the fire nation attacked. everything changed when the fire nation <coughs> including it's a cartoon that came out in nickelodeon in 2005 to our whenever it ended i don't know there's three seasons there's correct three seasons, yeah. yeah has nathan seen it as much as i have about Oh, okay. Where did you leave off? Mm, I want to say it was the episode after the they were dealing with the insurgent people on the one in the one place. Jet. Yeah, Jet. <clears throat> I'm trying to remember. Jet. I think it was one episode after that. Okay. Yeah. Yes. You got a lot. They went to the fire them. temple. I think that's the last I saw. Ah, uh, the fire temple. Yes. Where they talked to Avatar Roku. Yes. Mm -hmm. Avatar Fire Stick. Yeah. <laughs> fire Stick. <laughs> Avatar Kindle <laughs> Color. <laughs> oh, man. Remember when Kindle was only black and white? Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. So we're talking about Avatar today. Um, this is... I love this show. This is... I, I, I last watched it when I was... Well, when it last aired, I guess. And then it came to Netflix, and I rewatched it, and I was like, "Dang, I remember this being good, but this is really good." Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So you guys just like, how do we do this? <laughs> just like, go for it. Just go for it. it. Yeah. Just go with. What just you tell want, us. Man. Tell us about. Right. Well, uh, Avatar is about a boy, and boy. he's 112 years old. What's his name? His name is Ang, not Ong. Ang. Ang. Some people call him Ang. But uh, <laughs> so we start off with uh, these two, I don't know, 14 and 15 year old water tribe 
people. Oh, I should probably give context. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about the world. Water. Water. Fire. Fire. Earth. Air. Air. Long all ago, four, <laughs> all the four nations lived together in harmony until <laughs> everything changed when, when the fire, fire nation attacked. attacked. <laughs> so there's this world where you have the different, you have these different tribes with each of them practices like these elemental powers, essentially. Um, called bending. Yeah, yes. they, they're all benders. So there's like air <laughs> bending, all benders, but... there's fire bending, earth bending, and water bending. And mm-hmm. Which is essentially just the manipulation of their respective elements. Yeah, mm-hmm. so you've got, you got the four, the four uh, sovereigns, the fire nation, the air nomads, the f- water tribes, and then the earth kingdom. Mm-hmm. They're all, none of them, they're not. They're all different things. Right. We're an autonomous collective. An <laughs> autonomous That's collective. Right they used yeah. to be an autonomous collective until the Fire Nation attacked. <laughs> attacked. <laughs> but then, when the world needed him most, the Avatar vanished. A hundred years, years go later. by. Well, okay, yeah, there's another part. Mm-hmm. So the uh, so the Fire Nation attacks. Everything changes. What they is, want to take over the world. What is the Avatar? The Avatar is the master of all four elements so everyone so there's some non-benders there's people who can bend one element Mm -hmm. and then there's one person in the whole world who like reincarnates every time he dies he or she dies and reincarnates they he's the the avatar is the master of all four elements and the bridge between the spirit world and the physical world Mm -hmm. and uh so the uh the we begin our story at the beginning of the the war between the fire nation and the rest of the world because the fire nation wants to take over everyone because they think they're the superior element Mm -hmm. and the uh last avatar vanishes vanishes well kind of not really he dies and -hmm. then they find out who the next well they, they know like there's a cycle so mm-hmm, right. it goes from fire to air to water, water to earth, earth yep. and in that so in that pre- order over and over. The previous avatar the previous was previous avatar was of the fire nation. Yep. So they knew the next one would come from the air nomads. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So then the they get the air nomads know that one of them is going to be the avatar, and so they test all their children, and they by giving the children certain toys or a, a bunch of toys they can tell which one is the avatar because the avatar <laughs> always picks the same four toys when they're a baby because <laughs> oh. they're like their it's their toys oh. that they've always had their whole life when did that start i don't know <laughs> time immemorial infinite regression infinite anyway. regression well there was the show does say there was a time before the avatar like, oh, okay and before bending and then gotcha. it just kind of came about because animals mm-hmm. which there is no regular animals in the show. <laughs> All no. of the animals are mixtures of. It's kind of a fantasy world. About. Yeah, there's it's like kind of the well, Earth definitely benders. right. But I mean, there's not a whole lot of ties to like real world stuff. It's, it's yeah. very high fantasy. The mm-hmm. the Earth benders learn from badger moles, and the the uh, air nomads learned from sky bison. Sky bison. Bison. Mm-hmm. bison. bison. Go bison. Mm-hmm. Except they kind of say bison. Yeah, well, they say bison. Because they're But ignorant. they're wrong because they're they don't wrong. go to NDSU. <laughs> they're ignorant. Fools. Ignant. Ignant. <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, I suppose, well, the Fire Nation, they the firebenders learn from the dragons. Uh-huh. Those are just dragons, but they're not real animals, so I suppose that counts. Only they're an air bison with air six bison. legs. Or how, like right. eight legs? Or they what? have six they legs. Have six legs, yeah. And then, who did the... Who did the water people learn from? They like learned whales. From I don't know. Dolphins. They learned from dolphins. Dolphins. Was it dolphins? I don't know. No, it was just, just dolphin that. sharks. Jamie just pulled up. Thrown. I'm just gonna. <laughs> I'm just gonna make it up. <laughs> they learned from dolphin sharks. Or Who did sh- whale the sharks. Water benders. That's a real animal, though. Learn <gasps> from. Wait a minute. <laughs> they learn waterboarding. <laughs> <laughs> That's Google. Uh, 
<laughs> and then I. <laughs> what's that on your? It says. <laughs> Literally, uh, Hitler. This is great content for audio only. We're podcast. just trying to do put all the original animal benders. Here we go. All the original animal benders. Oh Here we gosh, go. I don't care about before the Dargans for fire. Okay, I don't care. I see about pictures Ray of Dargans and Arch Dreams and the Badger Moles. Uh, I don't want to read random crap about Amazon. Whatever. We'll, well, we'll just go with the we'll just go with the dolphin with sharks. The do- they pretend it's dolphins. Dolphin no, it can't be just dolphins. Okay, dolphin it's sharks. Dolphin sharks. They're half fish, half a mammal. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> that biology's. Yep. That's that's how it is. Um, anyway, so the story begins in the Southern Water Tribe. Um there's these this small group of village vi- this small village of people kind of eskimo like in the south pole kind of eskimo like yes inuit like yes um and there's these two characters we meet uh Sokka and katara they are brother and sister mm-hmm. and around 14 15 years old and they're on a boat and they're it's going fast and <laughs> They've got a nautical themed cashmere raft game. <laughs> they probably do, actually. <laughs> I think you could probably, probably uh, define would be a stretch to put that. that in your fanfic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so they're on their they're on their boat, and they they're fighting because Katara's like blaming Sokka for being sexist, which he was being kind of and is routinely. And is routinely sexist. But yeah. We'll Are they twins or is one of them older? No, uh, I think Sokka's er- the older brother. But he doesn't act like it. But of course they have to make Katara put him down all the time. Mm-hmm. I mean Sokka's kinda of dumb, but Cause boy. <laughs> boy. <laughs> anyway. So she's yelling at him for being sexist and whatnot, and she's flailing her arms around, and there's an iceberg behind her, and she's she's just learning. She's the only um, she's the only waterbender left in her tribe because hmm. the Fire Nation took them all away, and uh, she's flailing her arms. Isn't that like including her parents? Yeah. Well, her mom was. I think her mom. Was oh, a no, she wasn't. Oh, she wasn't. <laughs> she's so. Her mom died because uh-huh. of Fire Nation, and then her dad was off to war, so they were being looked of, looked after by their grandmother. Mm-hmm. Um, but so she's flailing her arms, and then she breaks accidentally breaks this iceberg in half with her little water bending, and it splooshes, and they almost capsize, and then this glowing ice orb comes up out of the water, and and they go up and they decide, let's poke it. Mm-hmm. And so they poke it, and it goes like you do, like you do. And then a, a boy, a twelve-year-old boy, comes out, and he's like, "Hi, I'm Aang." <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. And there's a giant bison with him, and uh, they're pretty spooked about it. And so they realize he's an Airbender, and so they bring him back to his tr- back to their tribe. And they kind of question him, try to figure out who he is. And so this whole time, Aang is trying to keep it a secret that he's the Avatar and that he ran away. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he's also, he's been in frozen in ice for 100 years. So the since the war began, he's been frozen in ice. So he has no idea about the war. Mm-hmm. Um, because he never, when he found out he was the Avatar, he never wanted to be the Avatar. He just wanted to be a boy. Mm-hmm. Have a regular life and whatnot. Boy. Boy. And uh, so he ke- keeps that a secret from them. And then Aang shows them really cool airbending stuff. And he's like, let's go penguin sledding. Because 12. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What? And they go. That's exactly what he sounds like. I didn't watch basically. the first episode. They they make a joke about that later, like in the last season about like the second to the last episode they make a play about them all and the so there's they a Fire Nation play. Themselves. Well, there's a Fire Nation play and they yeah. like and uh, Aang is portrayed 
as a girl. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> or not as a girl, but he's played as a girl. Right, played by, by a girl. girl. Yeah. Right. Anyway. Anyway. So he goes penguin sledding with Katara and and Sokka's like, I don't think we should trust him. And so they go off and play and then they find an old Fire Nation ship and they set off a let's booby trap. Let's go on it. Yeah, let's go. Let's go on it. And then Even though our grandma told us not to. Booby traps. And he's like, what were you saying about booby traps? And then he, there's the flare, it goes off. And then so uh, that shoots off a flare, which a nearby Fire Nation ship sees, which has another important character on it. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, Zuko. Prince Zuko. Prince, <laughs> Prince Zuko. Uh, that was like Indian. <laughs> <laughs> the Prince Zuko? Yes. He's they, no, they're more Japanese than anything. Yeah. Um, and then, so, uh, he's like, <gasps> he's a fire nation, dude. There's a person over there. And he sees the spies through his spy glass. He's like, I found the avatar. I can restore my honor. Cause he's exiled. Cause he's, he is exiled, uh, edge Lord and mm -hmm. everything is bleak. And he his must uncle, his um, cool scar on his eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's well, sort of his, not his, his uncle, his isn't it his uncle? No, Zuko has the scar. No, his uncle is like his mentor on the show. Oh, though. yes, yes. Yeah. His uncle Iroh. 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 That, I was trying to remember his name. So his, him and his uncle Iroh, well, I don't know why Iroh's exactly with him, just because he loves him, I guess. I think which so. Which is nice. That's sort of what is implied. Because, uh, so he's been banished. Um, Zuko's been banished by his father because he did dumb things or he embarrassed his father. And so um, his uncle goes with him. He has a ship, one ship with a small crew. That's what he's given. And he's off sailing the world for looking for the Avatar. Because if he can catch the Avatar, he believes he can restore his honor. Mm -hmm. um, and so he finally sees, he sees off in the distance the flare. And he sees, oh, that guy's jumping really high like an airbender. And there's only one airbender left that we know of. So that must be the avatar, and it is. Mm -hmm. And so he goes to the he goes to the uh, nearby tribe, and he breaks all their snow forts. And he says, "Where's the avatar?" And then uh, everyone's like, "Avatar? What are you talking about?" And then Aang's like, "I'm the avatar," and they're like, <gasps> "You're the avatar!" And everyone goes gasp. And so he's like, okay, if you uh, leave these people alone, I'll go with you. And so he says, okay. And they go off. And then later. Mm -hmm. Show's over. Everyone pack it up. Go <laughs> Show's over. Yeah. The end. Episode one. That's it. Katara is like, how could we? And then they're like, let's go rescue him. And then. There's some yada, yada, yada. Hey, no, you shouldn't go. And she's like, yes, we should go. And eventually grandma's like, yeah, it was your destiny to go do it. Go do it. <laughs> oh, thanks, grandma. Thanks, grandma. And uh, so they they go off and they rescue him. Um, and then they finally fly off on Appa, who... Oh, the I air remember. bison. Air the sky. Sky, sky bison. bison. The sky bison. Appa. His name is Appa. That is... That is like Aang's Abba pet. With, but with peas. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. And he says, yep, yep. And they go off into the into the sky. They go, we fly. And they're like, we got to go find teachers because... He's still a kid. And he doesn't know how to master the other He's still a kid. He's elements. 112 years old, but he looks 12. Because he's 12. Captain America frozen in ice. Yep. And you don't age in, when you're in the ice. Because no. that's how... Ice works, I, I guess. Ice works. <laughs> It also freezes time. Uh -huh. And so um, he has to go learn all four elements. So the first thing they decide to do is go learn uh, water bending from the northern water tribe. And uh, Katara being the only um, water bender in her tribe, in the southern tribe, uh, decides to... Uh, Go with. Go with. Well, obviously. Because she wants to learn. learn but she wants to learn from the northern tribe as well because she has had no one to teach her all her life. 
So they go on their way. They're headed. The whole first season is them headed for the North Pole. Yep. Where their kin are. Um, they make stuff. many pit stops they along make the many, way and, and do many character development. Many character development. They go to the Airbender. Airbenders. The Airbender place and realize oh, they're yeah, all dead. Oh, yeah, that's probably an important part. So um, on their way, the first stop is... The Southern Air Tempo- Temple, which is just north of the Southern Water Water Tribe, so they go there, and there's no one there. But Aang's blissfully ignorant, because he doesn't want to accept the truth that the Fire Nation was there and killed everybody. Mm-hmm. And eventually, he finds the bones of his old mentor, Monk Kiatso, mm-hmm. and he goes all Avatar, and he almost destroys the place. But Off then the chain. <laughs> Katara uh, snaps him out of it. Yep, he Black comes him out of it. <laughs> <laughs> He's going Hulk. Hey, hey there, big guy. Hey the sun's getting guy. pretty low. <laughs> <laughs> and yep, Aang is the Hulk. And so except he, he turns blue down. and doesn't get bigger. And that's where Aang finally accepts the truth. Like, oh wow, I guess I really All have. My been. friends are dead. Hence the last Airbender. Last Airbender <clears> is he. <throat> He's the only one who's not dead. Yes. Not dead. I'm not quite dead. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. Um, but uh, so after that, they do some pit stops. They're in, they find their friend Boomy and Omashu. Friend and Boomer. Friend, friend, <laughs> friend Boomy. Friend Boomer. <laughs> and he does his... Who was his friend, Aang's friend when he was 12. Yes. But he's and old he's now. And he's still alive somehow. He is also 112 years old, but, but actually, actually looks like, like it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he traps his... Um, Sokka Omashu and, is in Earth City, by the way. Right. Yes. They're in the Earth, Earth Kingdom, and they go to Omashu, and King Boomy is his old friend. And... He traps his new friends in rock candy and makes them do do a bunch of stupid things to free them. And then at the end, it's like, they were never in any danger. They could have eaten their way out. And you've gotten that far. I I remember that episode vaguely. And Flopsy. (laughs) His pet bunny gorilla thing. (laughs) Because two animals for everything. Uh Uh-huh. Um, so they do that for no reason because filler Mm -hmm. and they go, oh, then they stop at other places. He goes to the spirit world for the first time where he meets, uh, Roku, who was the last avatar fire stick, (laughs) fire stick. (laughs) And, uh, it's not been outmoded by smart TVs yet. Yeah. Roku tells him, you need to meet me at. The Fire Temple, IRL. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's like... like Well, because Aang accidentally goes into the spirit Yeah, world. he accidentally goes into it. But he's like, I can't tell you everything here because reasons. So go to the Fire Temple physically so we can continue to talk in spirit. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, but it only can you can only do it on the winter solstice. So you better get there fast. And they're like, winter solstice? That's in a, in a day. Winter solstice? Solstice. Solstice. Winter. That doesn't end with er, James. <laughs> oh. Winter. Winter. <laughs> Winter. <laughs> anyway. Here we go. Um, and then, so they get there, and they have to be sneaky because it's in the Fire Nation. And so one of the guys at the Fire Temple is actually secretly loyal to, still loyal to the Avatar, while the rest of them are loyal to the Fire Lord, who is the king of the Fire Nation. Mm-hmm. And so, Fire Lord Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill. Is it actually Mark Hamill? Yeah. Oh, nice. Well, his name is Ozai. Yes. His name is Ozai, <laughs> but I call him Fire Lord Mark Hamill. Mm-hmm. Yes. Anyway, so he talks with Roku at the temple, <laughs> and Roku says, Hey, there's going to be a comet that comes at the end of the year. It's called Sozin's Comet. And well, Haley's com- I mean, <laughs> the, they, they, the Fire Nation people use it to enhance their powers. Yes, they draw power from the, from the comet, and they're going to use it to destroy the world at the end of the year. So you only have a year to learn all four elements and defeat the Fire Lord. Good luck. And then he says bye. Mm-hmm. Well, helps them escape, and then bye. Yes, that's right. Oh, yeah, because he... he 
materializes and then everyone's like <gasps> avatar roku well the, he like possesses ang right avatar goku oh, avatar goku yes he's got avatar the, Ugwe. what would goku's uh uh element be if he were in ball <laughs> ball <laughs> he's a ball Probably bender oh, oh, God. No. why did i say that <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it hurts to think of that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it went a lot better. <laughs> anyway. anyway. After uh, all that exposition. After all that exposition, he's like, okay, I better go fast. And then they go fast. They go fast. And uh, they go to they go places. They do avatar things. They do avatar things. Yes, and then they get to the North Pole, where all the interesting things happened in plot and stuff. And so they get there and they start learning. And then the guy, the 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 uh, it's kind of a jerk. Yeah, the uh, the teacher, the water bending teacher, is a he's a jerk, and he has to stick to tradition because tradition's bad. Bitter. And. Uh, well, like yes. the, from the show's perspective, from tradition, tradition, perdition, yes. perdition. <laughs> but uh, uh, Katara's like, screw your tradition. I've Even got she's money there to learn things. But so he won't let Katara learn because she's girl. Oh, and um, so he'll only teach Aang. And uh, so, which wouldn't make much sense because what if the avatar really was a girl? You really need a fidget cube for this boy. <laughs> hmm? You really need a fidget cube. I do. I fidget or a with spinner. a lot of I used to have a spinner. Gave it away. I don't think a spinner would help. I think you'd drop that too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I need a fidget cube. You need some throwing stars. <laughs> <laughs> to fidget with. <laughs> to fidget with. During the podcast. Only fidgeting. <laughs> yes. Nothing else. Um. Anyway, so... Uh, Anyway, so he's teaching um, Aang waterbending, and Katara's salty about it because Cause he's reason. natural, because he's the Avatar. Yeah. And so... There's been a few other cases, too, where she's like a little jealous of how easily he learns things. Yes. She gets very jealous. Jealous. Yellows. Yellows of things. Um, Filled with geel. <laughs> And so, uh, eventually, he some exposition happens, and if he finds out that she is actually the granddaughter of who he was supposed to get married to, so his, her grandmother oh. was betrothed to him, and so then oh. he's like, "Oh, Awkward. you were you're wait, the... wait, wait," and her grandmother didn't say anything, or is it a different no. grandmother? So, her grandmother didn't marry this guy. Right, she ran away to the South Pole. And she didn't say anything. And she didn't say anything. And so he was salty about it, but then but he still loved her. <laughs> and anyway, so he finds out that this is that that Katara is her granddaughter, and he's like, Oh, I guess I can train you since you're almost family, but not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so then he starts training them both, and then all of a sudden there's an eclipse. Well, not all of a sudden there's an eclipse, but the, the Fire Nation shows up and Mr. Dun, dun, dun. Zhao shows up who has been chasing them this whole time along with Zuko. Um, he shows up and he's like, I'm going to lay waste to the water tribe and I'm going to... And they, there's a clip, an eclipse when they attack so that the they draw the... So the waterbenders draw their power from the moon. And... Um, so during the eclipse is the perfect time because they don't have any water bending during the lunar eclipse. Mm -hmm. And so they're under siege by the fire Navy and um, some stuff happens. And uh, there's a lot that happens, actually. So uh, Aang is captured by Zuko, who snuck in... Um, he swam through like the water ducks and then swooped him the and ducks. got him while he's in his meditative state. So Releasing he was out of body. Ducks fast. 
So Aang goes to the sacred place where there's these two fish, these two koi fish, and they are the moon spirit and the water spirit. And he's trying to figure out how to defeat the uh, the Fire Nation, keep them, keep the water tribe safe um, from them. But while he's there, he gets nabbed by Zuko, who takes him into the frozen tundra and almost dies because he didn't think things through. And then, um, so, uh, he gets nabbed and then rescued again by Katara and Sokka. They go back and Zhao's there and he kills the moon spirit. <gasps> bum, bum, bum. And so the moon goes dark and basically he destroys the moon. But we are going to steal the moon. But luckily. There's no minions in this one. But luckily, the. Uh, so once this happens, um, moon spirit or water spirit gets mad and then uses Aang as a catalyst to destroy the fire navy. And it goes all glowy and destroys the fire navy as giant water fish thing. And then afterward. Um, so another character, Yue, um, she was, she had some of the moon spirit in her because the moon spirit gave her life when she almost died. So she owes her life to the moon spirit. So she gave up her life to save the uh, the moon spirit and then became the moon. Oh wow! And she was like Sokka's first girlfriend for like two episodes. Um, so he's like, ah, oh, that's rough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so moon. He, his uh, girlfriend becomes the moon. And <laughs> I'm the moon. Uh, so all that happens, and then they beat him. Zhao dies. He drowns in the sea, and then... That's rough, buddy. That's rough, buddy. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's in the that's later. third season. But we need to move on to second season. Yay. So then... Um, and then... And then... Uh, and then so there was no war. The second season is all about earth i think season two is my favorite season. i like season two the best too. i haven't seen that far yet it's so good because there's just a lot more uh character development mm -hmm. and this is where you realize that the story isn't actually about ang it's about zuko oh and so zuko um and iro at the beginning of uh season two are labeled as failures um, in the Fire Nation for their loss at the Northern Water Tribe. And so um, more characters are revealed. Azula, who is Zuko's crazy sister. Who is Daphne. <laughs> Daphne. What do you mean? She's the voice actor of Daphne. In the movies? Like the Scooby-Doo movies? In or like what? all of the Scooby-Doo cartoons ever made. Really? Yeah. Gray no De way. Ray Delise. Yeah. I'm going to have to listen to her voice. So is she kind of like to Scooby-Doo what the guy's Optimus Prime is to Optimus Prime? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, as far as I know, every incarnation of Daphne, she's voiced. Huh. Hmm. Yeah. So she's introduced. She is Zuko's younger sister, and she's, she's all bad. sorts of evil. Ooh. And crazy and manipulative, and she she controls people. She doesn't really know how to make friends, so she she's just controls also, people. She's also an extremely powerful firebender. Yes, very very good firebender, and she's just all hopped up on the on the, the fire, fire stuff. <laughs> Fireball. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <feel> <laughs> <it>. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I actually secretly very much like that song. Well, now it's not a secret. Well, Fireball. Whoever's listening to this podcast will know that you like this song. All two of us. <laughs> <laughs> um, a secret to keep. Forever. Anyway, so keep it, keep it safe. <laughs> so uh, Azula goes to say, "Hey, Dad wants what you a back. Wonderful can. You guys <laughs> are welcome back." But then they realize that they overhear some conversations, and they realize that they're being taken prisoner and going to oh. be imprisoned back in the fire nation so they fight their way out of the fire nation guards that have them and then they run away and so for the rest of season two they're fugitives in the earth kingdom which is occupied by the fire nation which basically. is also occupied by the fire nation in some parts mm -hmm. in most of it 
most of it, not Except Bossing Say. Except for Bossing Say. Say, because there is no war. There is no war in, in Bossing Bossing Say. Say. <laughs> <laughs> I am Judy. Hello, I am Judy. <laughs> Welcome to Bossing Say. <laughs> You'll get there. I'll get there, yeah. It's it's good. It's good stuff. Um, so, the, uh, Aang and the gang go... I like that. ...around, and they, they go to the love cave, and they're like, what? how do we get out of the love cave? And then all the hippies are like, love, of course! And then it turns out it was just you had to... And they're like, let's sing our way out. And then they run out of light and they're like, oh, there's just light crystals that lead the way. Let's follow those. <laughs> and so they follow those to, they try to go back to Omashu where Boomy is. And because Aang wants to learn earthbending from Boomy. But it turns out that Azula has beaten them there and has taken over the city so that he can't learn from Boomy. So he's like, okay, don't know where we're supposed to go now. And so they end up in this swamp and... Castle in the swamp. What? How do you do it? It sank into the swamp. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they have visions in the swamp. Oh. And... Those swamp gases, you know. It's swamp gases. Swamp and the gas R-O-U-S's. Monster. Yeah. I don't think they exist. <laughs> and so Aang sees this vision of this girl in the swamp. <laughs> and he's like, who is this girl? Oomst. And she's being followed around by a flying boar. And so they get out of the swamp and they go to this random earth town <clears throat> and they try to find a, a bending teacher for Aang. And so they l hear about this girl who uh or no they go, they go to, to this dual arena they go to the wwe oh. <laughs> for, earth <benders. laughs> for earthbenders nice and the boulder and the gorons wait no the, it's literally the wwe the boulder feels conflicted about beating up a little girl <laughs> <laughs> it is a rip off of the rock it's literally so good it's literally <laughs> The writers of that episode must be like, what if? The boulder will rock you in a landslide. <laughs> boulder? Yes. Heh! <laughs> anyway. So they're, they're at WWE, and then this girl shows up. She's a blind girl, and she is the champion. And she beats the boulder and everyone else. And Aang's like, that's her! That's the girl in my vision! And so he challenges her to a duel, and so she fights him and then loses to him because he's not an earthbender, as it turns out. He's an airbender. Well, he is an earthbender. He just hasn't learned it yet. But. Mm -hmm. So he loses to him, and she gets mad about it, and then they find out where she's from, and she's from a very rich family. We know where you live. Whose family crest is a flying boar. Uh... And so that's where the flying boar came from. And so they go there, and they find out she where she lives and then they go visit her family and um so Toph is her name. Her name is Tough. Tough. T O P H Toph. Yes, Toph. So her name is Toph and she is I don't know how old around Aang. She's twelve. She's Aang's pseudo Physiolo age. Phys physiological <laughs> age. Physiological age. So she's twelve and she is blind, but she can see through her feet by feeling vibrations through earthbending. Is so she, she can actually see as long as she's connected to the ground. Is she like a mollusk? No. With mollusk. Eyes in her feet? She doesn't have eyes in her feet. She uh, has. So she feels she the vibrations. Feel vibrations. She's uh, an earthbender. Yes. Right. So right. she sees the the shape and of being things. blind makes her a better earthbender. So she, yes. Like so daredevil, she becomes, but like an she's more in tune but, with the earth. She's uh, like the most one of the most powerful well probably in the in the show she's like the most powerful earthbender because she doesn't have her eyes to deceive her and she uses the earth to see uh. and so she can see like underground and everything um but she can't like see like details of things she can't see like see faces or she can't read she can't read books or anything she mm -hmm. just sees the shape of the book and uh so she but she her family's rich and extremely worried about her, so they don't let her do anything. 
Um, so eventually, uh, the she lets she's her and Aang are captured by the dun, WWE dun, dun. and uh, for ransom, and so they give him a ransom, and then she beats them up, and she's like, "Sorry, mom and dad, I lied to you. I'm actually a really good Earthbender, and I've been doing WWE." <laughs> 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 and she's like, "I this is who I am. I hope you love me." And they're like. We need to keep more restrictions on you. And then they kick the avatar out and then she sneaks away um, anyway and goes with them. And uh, her family sends bounty hunters to find her and bring her back, whatnot, um, which don't really they, they make like two appearances in the show. And then later everything's resolved with sending a letter to her family saying sorry <laughs> could you not <laughs> it's like could you not send the bounty hunters i'm sorry <laughs> oh, oh okay oh okay cool <laughs> and so anyway um toff teaches ang uh earthbending and which he has a lot of trouble with because he's an airbender and so air is the opposite of yeah earth. air is like the opposite of earth so he has the most trouble learning earthbending and he gets frustrated and, and toff they... doesn't really help with that because she's a very um, strong personality. Yes. As all earthbenders are. Yes. It's very, I like... like, stubborn, hard to move. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Aang's just a very agile, floaty, constantly moving kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He so calls, they're... or she calls him uh, Twinkle Toes. Twinkle Toes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so, uh, eventually, they do things, and there's a really hard point where... Aang's finally able to just get it, and he, through lots of hard work and stuff. And, and he, also understanding the spirit of earthbending. Yes, like understanding. What, what the, just be stubborn, don't move, be a rock. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so. You to move the rock. You have to be, be the rock. You must be unmovable. You must be Dwayne Johnson. Um, anyway, so then they meet top, blah, blah, blah. Um. Oh, and meanwhile, while this was all happening, Zuko and um, Iroh are off being fugitives. But uh, Zuko is growing his hair out. Yes. Oh. And they they each cut off their t ponytail bun things because they're that's a, a it's like the symbol of the Fire Nation. Ah. Uh, so they could commit subuku with their <laughs> hair <laughs> just with their hair well, just, just with their with hair, their hair. <laughs> and so <laughs> that'll be then... awfully depressing at a kid's show <laughs> <laughs> they lose their honor and commit subuku <laughs> yes and then so they're off being fugitives and they get in uh they get angry just at each other do, well do. zuko gets angry at iro so for being a voice of reason and stuff and he's like i need honor he's impetuous so he's like i think it's best we go our own ways so he goes off zuko goes off on his own way and tries to find his own way and blah 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 while iroh just sneakily falls follows behind because he's like well i'll let him do his thing because he needs to but i'll still follow him because he'll probably need me soon Mm -hmm. So he does that because he's a good uncle and he's very wise and we'll get more we'll get more about him later. Um oh. so he they're off doing that and they're um so then after this, Aang and all those guys they go to this desert and they find the secret library. Um and they use it to find something find dirt on the Fire Nation to help them figure out how to defeat the Fire Nation. Um, and they find out that there's an sure eclipse. Sure find a lot of dirt. Sure find a lot of dirt and sand. Because the library is buried under the sand in the desert. Hmm. And so they go to the library and they find out a bunch of stuff. And Sokka finds out that there is uh, going to be an eclipse in a couple months. And during the, the solar eclipse, just like the lunar eclipse for the waterbenders, the solar eclipse will take away the firebending. Oh. So... They will, uh, so during the eclipse, they plan on, they plan on, well, they plan an invasion for the eclipse day, which doesn't happen until very later. Um, so they get the information and while they're getting the information, Appa, they're flying bison and their main transportation is stolen, <laughs> uh, by these sand benders and what? they, he's sold on the black sand market. Desert. 
Yeah. True. So they're earthbenders that just live in the desert. Live in the desert. Yeah. Anakin's worst enemies. <laughs> <laughs> their worst. His worst enemy is the sandbenders. It's like my worst nightmare is realized. <laughs> I don't like sandbenders. Sandbenders. They're coarse and they're rough. And they and get they're irritating everywhere. and they get everywhere. I killed them all. <laughs> sand people. Yes, they are the sand people. But we digress. <laughs> uh, but um, so they learn about the eclipse and they're like, okay, let's go to the Earth King who lives in Ba Sing Se and tell him about this news so that he can use it uh, in a plan to fight the Fire Nation. So they're they like let's go to Ba Sing Se. So they go to Ba Sing Se, and at the same time, um, oh, some stuff happens where um, uh, all the characters meet up in this western old west town. It's abandoned, and so uh, Zuko is there. They have a duel, and Azula is there, and they have a duel. A, a, and a tumbleweed rolls by. And Aang is there and all his friends. And so they're all fighting. And uh, then um, Uncle Iroh shows up. And Zuko's like, Uncle! And, Uncle. and then uh, Zula shoots him with lightning because that's something firemenders can do. They can oh. make lightning. They can bend lightning. They, they can, can't make lightning. Well, they kind of make is it. Is it kind they of just, like They fire? just do a thing. Is that then, why? Well, I suppose, never mind. Yes, they bend lightning because it's somehow related to fire. But really, not anyway. <laughs> it's kind of explained, but not really. Okay. <laughs> um, so, anyway, he shoot, she shoots lightning uh, in a cheap shot against Iroh and then runs away because everyone's got her backed up in the corner and she runs away. And so... Zuko is like, Uncle, no! And then Katara's like, I can help because she can... Uh, also heal people with her water bending because that's something water benders can do they can heal people mm. and so she does that or well she offers that and then uh zuko's like leave and then they he just makes them all run away and so he takes care of iroh himself and then once he's better they go to bossing say as well so everyone's going to bossing say now <laughs> Which uh, is significant for iroh Yes. Because Iroh once sieged Ba Sing Se as a Fire Nation general. Yes, he was once a and general. He was, he was defeated there. In the war. Mm -hmm. and he was... It was the one place he was defeated. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Something like that. And he, <clears throat> he also lost his son at that battle, too. Oh. His son died at that battle. Um, which is why he... Probably why he loves Zuko so much. Because Zuko is now like his lost son. Mm -hmm. and he doesn't want to lose him just like he lost his own son um so the everyone's in bossing say um and so the uh avatar crew gets there and then there's a big drill and it's trying to drill the wall and it turns out it's azula again hooray and so they fight the drill in azula and they beat her and she runs away again <laughs> and then they go into the city and it turns out that the city is controlled by the mafia. Or oh. I don't know how what you would call it. An underground the organization. Yakuza. The Yakuza. <laughs> they're they're called the Dai Li. Oh. The Earth Kingdom's more Chinese than Japanese. It is, but I don't know what the Chinese equivalent would be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're called the Dai Li. <laughs> the Communist and they, Party. They keep, they keep Not order. Dai Li. Yeah. Not to be confused with her. Yes, she's another character that we may mention later. She isn't. She's not that significant. She's for the simps. But... Uh... <laughs> uh... <laughs> yes. Um, and so, um, anyway, so they get there, and they're greeted by Judy, and she's like, "Hello, I'm Judy. Welcome to Ba Sing Se." And she's like, I will bring you to your quarters. And they have a big house for the Avatar and stuff. They're expecting them somehow. And so they're like, okay. Okay. And so they're like, this lady is creepy because she has a big fake smile. And um, can't trust Judy. Can't trust Judy. No. 
<laughs> um, and so they're trying to figure stuff out. They're like, we need to go to the Earth King. And Judy's like, there is no war in Ba Sing Se. <laughs> you need to warn him about the war. And there she's like, shh, 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 shh no war, no. And so... <laughs> Um, she's trying to keep them quiet about the war because people don't actually know about the war within oh. the walls of Ba Sing Se because it's a, it's like the a, mafia is controlling all the information so that n- nobody they can knows. keep the people docile. Yes, oh. and they have to preserve the culture of the last city with Earth Kingdom culture left in the Earth Kingdom. So not even the king actually knows about the war. Oh, and so um. They go to a party that the king is supposed to be at. Um, he's throwing a party for his pet bear. <laughs> not not platypus bear. Not monkey bear. Not panda bear. Just bear. Bear. <laughs> and they're like, this place is weird. <laughs> yeah. And um, so they go to the party for the pet bear. And... Um, so they get there, and and uh, the head of the Dai Li is there, and eventually um, their cover is blown because they weren't supposed to be there actually. And then everyone's like, "Oh, the Avatar is here! Hooray!" Because they know who the Avatar is; they just right. didn't know there was a war. Mm-hmm. Um, so the Avatar is here, and so he's like, "Look at me, everybody!" And he does a bunch of cool tricks, and then like the king is the king's uh, cart shows up. But there's no king. And then it's the uh, head of the Dai Li. And he's like, come with me. And he takes them all away secretly without making too much of a fuss. And he's like, you can't talk about the war here. There is no war in Ba Sing Se. <laughs> there is no war. There's no war. No war. No. There's no war in no. Ba And so. No, no way. Um, they're like, but the people have to know. And then they're like, if you say anything, we're going to lock you up forever. And so they <laughs> As if. Um, do a bunch of other things and try to be quiet. And then, so after this, another Judy, a different up. person, different person, still named Judy. Oh my gosh. She's like, hello, I am Judy. And they're like, you're not, you're not Judy. Judy. <laughs> And it's like, yes, oh, what, are you ta- what are you talking about? I am Judy. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not, though. But you're not. <laughs> but this is a song. No, it's a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I listened to that. Have you heard that song? No. Oh, you okay. You should. <laughs> later. Yeah, later. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. So, uh... There's all these crazy MacGuffins going on and whatnot. And is this still season two? This yes. is still season two. Oh my gosh, it's there's a lot. Uh, meanwhile, Zuko and Iro are living in Bossing Say, trying to make new lives, running um, a tea shop, running running a tea shop. So they first ah. get hired. Iro really likes tea, so this yes. is like dream come true for him. Iro mm. loves tea, and um, so he gets a job for the both of them at a tea shop and then he cooks or cooks he brews such lovely tea that a big business man comes and offers him his own tea shop he's like you can have your own tea shop if you work for me and i'll give you your own apartment and stuff he's like yep (laughs) (laughs) yep sounds good no question no question and so he goes and they have their own tea shop and meanwhile zuko is undergoing a lot of changes and He's like, because he, before he was obsessed with getting the avatar and restoring his honor, but all this time in Bossing Say with his uncle is making him realize there's more to life than just uh-huh. reclaiming your throne. And that real happiness comes from just um, the simple thing. Which, which Iroh's been trying to like get him to learn this whole time, but yeah. he, he never listens. Yeah. So um, eventually he has this fever because he's changing mentally or whatever spiritually and so he has a fever and after his fever he's like a completely different person he's super happy and he's like hooray uncle let's go make tea and it's act it's really weird but it's also like wow this is 
like that's probably one of my favorite parts because he's like changed he's let go of all the the past and he's let go of the chasing the avatar and he's he's happy and uncle iroh is happy and um so they're happily there and then secretly azula infiltrates later into the city and takes over the daily and cuz um eventually the avatar before exposed the daily and uh informed the king and stuff and so the king was like how dare you control me it was a it was a big uh, st- grima yeah <laughs> grima warm tongue moment and Gand- avatar was the avatar was gandalf as a child as a child. Imagine how weird that would be. <laughs> 112, 12 year old. Child Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> so they do that. And so the Daily want control of the city again. The so Daily Llamas? They meet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, Azula meets the Daily and takes over, basically, mm. uh, through trickery and sneakery because that's what she does. And they form a coup against the king and overthrow the government and take over Ba Sing Se. And so, so now there's definitely war in Ba Sing Se. So now there's definitely war in Ba Sing Se. The Fire Nation controls Ba Sing Se. And um, what's next? Is that? Um, so this is near the end. Yeah, yeah, this is close to the end of season two. Um, We're in the end game now. <laughs> Yeah. So then a bunch of stuff happens. I think um, about I think it's about time I joined your group. <laughs> no, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. What? Uh, uh so then um they end up fighting Zuko and or no. Azula and the Avatar gang start fighting again. they fight against the Daily and whatnot and they find Appa and then uh there's this big battle at the end of the season um they're fighting and so azula being azula being azula offers um zuko his like honor back and um his home and old life back if he helps her and so he's uh he succumbs to the to her offer and he betrays uncle Iroh who has at this point decided not to be in line with fire nation anymore Mm -hmm. because he's realized living in the city that everything they've been doing has been wrong and um, that there's like real people behind the walls and there's like other cultures that are good other than fire nation. Mm -hmm. So he betrays, his uncle um and he's sent to prison and then he goes home with azula after they defeat presumably assumedly assumedly presumably let's go with that presumably presumably Presumably, supposedly supposedly killed the avatar so avatar went into his ang went into his avatar state and then azula shoots lightning into his back nearly killing him which uh, he's not quite dead. He's not quite dead. He was dead, but then luckily, um, Katara had special water from season one that uh, allowed her, her to water. spirit water to uh, patented bring special him back. water, old anyway. family recipe. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, that all happens. The they go back as heroes and. The Fire Nation uh, people do. Yes, the Fire Nation people go back as heroes. And Zuko finally has everything he always wanted, but isn't happy. Um, and then the whole world thinks that the Avatar is dead. And dun, dun, dun. so everyone's happy. But Zuko secretly knows that Aang is still alive. He's pretty. Sh- he knows that Aang's still alive because he n- knew about the water. Mm-hmm. So, but he's not saying anything because he's still kind of conflicted about what he just did. So mm-hmm. he's not completely telling the truth. So he's like, "Yeah, he's dead. Don't worry, he's dead for sure. For yep. sure, dead." And so, dead. beginning of season three, the well, yeah, 
a lot of things happen. There's there's like two halves to season three. The first half is everyone's in the Fire Nation. The Avatar crew dresses up as Fire Nation citizens and does a lot of filler. And then the invasion happens. Yo, Hotman. <laughs> <laughs> flame, flame yo, <laughs> flame yo, Hotman. <laughs> Yes, all the Hotmans. And he goes to school because they have to have a school episode. Because he has to learn firebending yet. Yes. Well, no, he just has to go to... He just goes to school. Like He just goes to regular old Fire Nation class. Oh. Yeah. And uh, he goes into history class and says, Hey, that's not how that happened. <laughs> it's like, how do you know? And then he teaches them how to dance and a lot of filler <laughs> Because happens. dancing is forbidden. Because no fun in Fire Nation. No so, fun. Avatar the Last Footloose? Yes. <laughs> That's Avatar basically the last... <laughs> what that episode was. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, except uh, very Eastern. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then... So they do a bunch of filler. Then the Eclipse is uh, the next day after a couple episodes and they're like oh time for the invasion and they go do the invasion yeah but as it turns out <gasps> azula knew about the invasion the whole time and so because she overheard in season two that we didn't talk about oh but there's so much to this show <laughs> um so they actually knew about the invasion so the plan was to raid the the capital and the palace and then defeat the fire lord during the eclipse when he didn't have firebending so they get there during the eclipse and there's no fire lord he's gone he's in a secret bunker and so uh they waste all the time and then the the, the uh, eclipse goes away and they didn't defeat the fire lord um except zuko found knew where his father was and he goes and he confronts him he's like um, I'm going to betray you now. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Hamill, I'm betraying you. Yes. And so he says, I'm joining the Avatar. And he's like, is that so? And <laughs> he didn't say it like that. No. Anyway, so he says it very Mark Hamill-y. Mark mm -hmm. hamill -y, But I Not have, Joker. I have a inside joke. <laughs> from, I have an inside joke from high school about is that so? <laughs> Anyway, so he's like, I'm going to go join the Avatar now and teach him firebending. And so Zuko runs away. Um, and everyone else who isn't Aang and his main friends is captured and sent to jail. Um, so they barely make it out alive or whatever. And they... Um, wait for they there's a, like a month till sozin's comet which is the big comet that's going to destroy everything mm -hmm. um well it's not going to destroy everything it's going to give the firebenders the power to destroy everything mm -hmm. but so he's like well i still i need to f get all four elements and i still don't know firebending so all of a sudden zuko shows up he's like hi there everyone i'm zuko can I join your group now? <laughs> and they're like, No! No! And he said, No! Yes. I mean, no. <laughs> and well, yes, so they're like, actually, No, we can never forgive you. Well, more like Katara's like, No, I can never forgive you for what you've done to us because she's Katara and she can't forgive anyone ever. Never. Um, I never liked your spinach puffs. Yes. My cabbages. I can't believe we didn't make a My we Cabbages. We didn't make a Cabbages. <laughs> my Cabbages! Is that during the Pirates episode? It's during the every episode. <laughs> there's somebody who's going to complain about their cabbages? There's a guy in the Earth Kingdom. There's a guy who's always shows up selling cabbages. <laughs> He's like, they, they always get destroyed. And they always destroy his cabbage. Oh, wow. And he goes, My Cabbages! Ugh. There wasn't an opportune moment to, no, there wasn't. to talk about. No, there wasn't. There's too much to talk about yeah. in the show. There is way too much to talk about. Yeah, we're already going on an hour, 20 minutes here. Oh, my, oh gosh. my gosh. We haven't this even is, got to it, Alice. This is, this is, we're making a two-part. We're beating the MCU episode. I mean, you could split it in half, make it two episodes. Well, we're, there's like no transition out. Like, we would have had to plan that. Right here. 
Well, wait. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, we're already like halfway through season three. Let's just go. Okay, let's just get it done with. Yeah. All right. Um. So, where was I? You guys thought I rambled. No. Uh, no, you're, no right is... month before Sozin's Comet, Zuko just joined. Yes. Or Zuko attempted to join in Qatar City. So, mm-hmm. and then he's, she says no. And then Sokka and Toph are kind of the voices of reason. Like, mm-hmm. well, okay. So, he's... So, we literally need to learn firebending ASAP. We have a month. Stop being dumb, Katara. Yeah. And he's here to... He seems really genuine. So, Toph also has this ability to know when people are lying because she can feel their vibrations and their body language mm-hmm. so she when he says that she's like he's not lying we can trust him but then katara's butt hurt anyway so eventually mm-hmm. there's a big fight because sparky sparky boom man who is a assassin who's after ang and uh zuko saves him from sparky sparky boom man so that sort of settles it then yeah and so is and then katara's like fine i'll let you but i'm keeping my eye on you and so he joins them and he teaches ang firebending but he doesn't know he loses his firebending after that because he his whole drive for finding his source of firebending was his anger and frustration against his father and his um quest to get ang so now that he's no longer on his quest to get ang he has no more source of anger to fuel his fire oh so fire bending is a very emotional discipline mm-hmm. it's fueled by any manner of internal emotion yeah that's why azula is so good at fire bending because she has so many emotions she crazy she got blue fire she is blue fire anyway so then <laughs> Um, <clears throat> they go to the beach. They go to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was that was a while ago. That was a while ago. <laughs> it wasn't. That's filler. It doesn't matter. Um. So then they go. Zuko and Aang go to the Sun Warriors, which are these old Mayan guys, and they were the original Firebenders, and they were assumedly. assumedly Oh my gosh. Supposedly. <laughs> Supposedly extinct. But it turns out they're not. And so they go there and they're like, teach us firebending, the true se- in the the true way to firebend. And um, they're like, we will bring you to the masters. And so they bring them to the masters and like, they will either accept you or destroy you. Well. And when they judge you and they're like, okay. <laughs> So they go and they're like, what choice do we have? Let's go. And so they go up to the top of this mountain. And they're wa- awaiting judgment from the masters and they haven't come out yet. And so they're waiting. And they're playing golf. There's these big, everyone's playing drums and stuff. And it's all like tribal and stuff. And <laughs> shark bait. Hoo-ha. <laughs> kind of. And so the masters come out and it turns out the masters are dragons. Oh. And so they start speaking spiraling around them and they're like what do we do what do we do what do we do and then they're like oh let's dance because they learned a firebending dance before and so they do the firebending dance and then it turns out that's what they were supposed to do they were supposed to dance with the dragons so the dragon they dance with the dragons and the dragons shoot sp- colorful fire and they're like i understand now because they saw a colorful fire wow and they danced and they danced and I they're see. like, this is true firebending. Now this is firebending. And then they just <laughs> and then they just figure it out. And <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. It's a little more in depth than that. Sure. It's better than I make it out to be, but Yeah, I reckon. It's basically what happens. Cool. Anyway, so they do that, and then there's a bunch of filler, and then it's the last episode, <gasps> which is three hour uh, not three hours, an hour and a half long. Oh. Three episodes long. Almost, almost slightly longer than this podcast. Slightly longer than this podcast. In which Aang pops off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean he does. Yes. And he uses all of the skills he learned along the way to defeat Fire Lord Mark Hamill. Yes. I and see. so Sozin's Comet is here. He's like, well, we couldn't. We were just going to wait till after the so- Sozin's Comet. But it turns out he's going to use Sozin's Comet to absolutely, literally kill everyone. So we have to kill him now. We have to beat him now. 
And but Aang is all conflicted because he doesn't want to kill anyone because he's a vegan and doesn't like to kill people. <laughs> and is a that, monk. Because <laughs> he's a vegan and he loves life, which is a great. So this is what I love about this show because Aang is like all about mercy and stuff. So he's like, there's mm-hmm. got to be a way to defeat him without killing him. And everyone's telling him you have to kill him. So he goes on this soul searching journey just before the comet. And everyone's like, where is he? And he goes and finds a giant lion turtle in the ocean. And uh-huh. the lion turtle talks to him. He says, <laughs> before the time of bending, we bended the energy within us. And then he goes. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> for those who can't see, which is all of you, John just put his finger on his forehead to emphasize that. Goes... <laughs> <laughs> well, he put his finger on his heart and his mind and he goes. <laughs> Anyway, so he teaches the the lion turtle teaches him how to Do bend inception. energy, and so he's like, "That's it. That's how I defeat the fire lord." So he shows up again. He's like, "Okay, let's go fight him." And he goes fights him, and there's a big climactic fight. Last episode, beautiful. Like, uh, so um, Zuko goes to the Fire Nation to confront azula and they have this amazing battle azula absolutely breaks down absolutely that part is basically my favorite in the whole show yeah she Azula's just collapse because all of her friends have left her and, and she's a lying and scheming manipulative crazy lady yeah and when you do that you reap what you sow her mother never loved her oh <laughs> and so she she spent her whole life controlling people and manipulating people and she's always like totally put together you know she's just like no hair out of place but in this last episode like her makeup is all washed off her comes hair undone. is everywhere she's just totally gone yeah because she just loses everyone in her life that she considered friends because everyone realized that she was crazy and didn't want to be her friend anymore I see. Um, so she's about to be crowned fire lord while her father is crowned phoenix king and so he goes off to destroy the world and she's back at home getting ready for coronation and then and then zuko's like fight me and then they have a big fight and it's really emotional and really cool and there's a lot of cool cinematics whatever you want to call it um and then uh so they have a big fight and then ang fights the fire lord and he comes just near enough to killing him and then he stops and then he like he bends, his bends him down and then he puts his thumb and thumbs on his heart and his mind and then he takes his bending away so he makes him powerless instead of killing him oh and so he learns that's it and then uh they go back to the fire nation and zuko's crowned fire lord and he's like I'm going to right every wrong that has been done in the last hundred years and do it with the help of the avatar and everyone's happy the end. Wow. (laughs) There you go. Let's get, let's get right into next time. Let's find out what's cool about this show. (laughs) Gosh, for our, for our Patreon. (laughs) No. Okay. Let's let's do it. Rapid, rapid fire, rapid fire transcendentals here. Okay, what's the first thing? Truth. Gotta go? Truth. Okay, well, um, so one, okay, biggest thing about truth in this show. So this show is very, like, the spirituality is very Eastern. Right. And um, as Catholics, I think it's very important for us to, well, obviously it's very. There is no balance between good and evil. Good has primacy. Right. But, um, but it's, it's also important to, like, look at the way other philosophies and worldviews approach things so find truth in right other philosophies because they all have elements of truth here and there yes so um finding the truth in in this show Mm -hmm. um there's a lot of eastern spirituality um especially like the whole i think the whole theme of the show is mercy and forgiveness um and reconciliation like the whole show is it's mostly when you think about it it's more about zuko than it is about ang because ang's 
whole You kind of know what Aang's arc is yeah. right from the get-go. He's, he's, he's the gonna Avatar. He's going to learn all four of the elements. He's going to defeat the Fire Lord. Everything's going to be hunky-dory there. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. And so, but uh, Zuko, he starts off with, I need to re- reclaim my honor. I need to re- get my throne back. And I have to do that by capturing the Avatar. But he goes through all these stages of getting him and losing him and all the while his uncle is trying to just gently guide him in the right way Mm -hmm. the whole time um and he just he has to redeem himself um so that'd be the element of goodness yeah so just redeeming himself and zuko is like the becomes the symbol of the fire nation in general Mm -hmm. because with him is everything the Fire Nation thought, and then it now has to become. They have to right all the wrongs they did. And, mm-hmm. and they have to reunite create. themselves within the balance of the elements. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, just all that. So he has to ask for forgiveness, and the world has to forgive him. And Iroh um, and forgives Iroh. him always. Always. There's this really cool scene. Where he's like, you know, I thought you were angry with me. He's like, I was never angry with you. I was uh, afraid. I was sad because I was afraid you'd lost your way. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that was really cool. It's a very Very powerful image of the father with us Mm -hmm. when we sin. Yeah. Um, And then just like Aang's whole uh, thing with mercy. Mm -hmm. Because he's lost everyone he ever loved. Mm-hmm. And yet he doesn't want to kill the Fire Lord, even though his the the Fire Nation killed all his people. He is the last. He's the sole member of his people, and he doesn't want to. He doesn't look for revenge. He also multiple times um, like helps other friends of his friends with revenge because like Katara at some points wants revenge for and her s- mother and stuff. And some of the some of the filler episodes, he's like a peacekeeper. Yeah. He's always a peacekeeper for everyone, trying to get them to reconcile with each other. Um, and that's just who the Avatar is. Right. He's the balance between the all, all four nations. Uh, he's the... Uh, the bridge between worlds. Bridge between worlds, yep. So he's the, he's the reconciler. It basically is his role. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, yeah. Beauty. Beauty? Animation, um, art style, very yeah, cool. Great. It is awesome. The, it's, the aesthetics of all of the nations are very fitting. And there's not even, like, one sole aesthetic per, like, element. But they're yeah. kind of within themes, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. The Earth Kingdom has, like, Greens some very and browns prim and... and proper people, but they also have some very, like... Um, rough and tumble. Rough and tumble types. Yeah. Like, yeah. the people within the cities are more proper and then then the people outside the farmers are more rough but um i think they they really um base each they're uh, they're all based off of of real martial arts styles yeah and um like cultures too like eastern cultures so i'd say like like fire nation is like jap more japanese Mm -hmm. whereas the earth kingdom is more chinese Mm-hmm. Um, and then I don't know what would water be like Korean or something. Water, maybe, I don't know. Maybe Mongolian or something. Mm-hmm. Mod- no, <laughs> no. Oh, that's what I thought. And then there's the air nomads who are very clearly uh, Hindu. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but um, they all have they're all modeled after real world cultures and styles. Mm-hmm. Um, which is very cool, and they use that a lot in the music too. Like, there's diff- certain there's different themes for each um, each uh, nation. I is know, Avatar themes. an anime? No. No. What distinguishes it? Is inspired it? by anime. It is, ins- it is not written by Japanese people, and it was not the, it is, the voicing is not in Japanese. It is okay. written in America. Nickelodeon. Also, the art style is different. Yeah, it's it's, it's a it's, little bit. It is definitely American cartoon inspired by anime. Yes, it is anime ish. Frame rate is a little low for my taste, but that's I dig the it. first episodes. It does improve. Okay. Yeah, 
Yeah. Because they were like they had on more a budget, budget yeah. for the pilot stuff. 2005. Um, Two. Unity, how does it all come together? Well, I think that's the, also... The Unity comes in balance. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like the, I mean, the Avatar is Unity. Yeah. He is incarnate. the symbol of Unity, yes. Um, just all four nations in one person. Or mm-hmm. all four elements in one person. And then he's reincarnated in a cycle between all the nations showing that like he's not born in the same nation every time mm-hmm. because he as doesn't bel- he belongs to the world provides balance as we've talked about before eastern you know mythos typically have a very cyclic nature about them yeah yeah mhm yeah neat uh yeah there's a lot i could I wrote so much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was like, I wonder if we're going to have to do like I, th- I would add to our points of goodness, like legitimate relationships between teenagers. Yes. Between teenagers. Between yeah. Like, it's not teenagers. like corny or stupid. Yeah. I mean, it is, it, there are some points where it's corny and stupid, but there's like actual, like not trivial, not stupid mm, like, yeah. interactions between. There's a lot of points it's just like goofy stupid points that just make it like super charming yeah. too i i really like sokka i think sokka is probably my sokka favorite is a character. Great character he like i just feel i just relate to him because he's, he's always like relief but he's got his own legitimate moments yeah he's comic relief and everyone no one really takes him seriously but he's actually really smart mm-hmm. and like because he's and always he grows a plans. lot over the series too yeah um like, I suppose sort of the first evidence of that is when, like, the whole deal with Jet, how he sort of sniffs him out as a... Oh, well, yeah. I think that fits exactly in with his, like, pre-existent arc. Like, yeah. he's very distrustful of other dudes, especially mm-hmm. around his sister. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't think that's, like, a development for him. I think he's very consistent. No, but I mean, like, in the show, like, that's one of the first... Like, it's in season one. It's, one, like, one of the first it's the one, ways like, they the first illustrate point that. point where he's vindicated is, like, not being a total moron. Yeah. Yes. Um. Yeah, I I was happy about that because <laughs> I really oh, like them. I don't like them label. I don't like it when shows make one person a just the moron. He's a moron. He is dumb, but he's got a lot of moments where he pulls through. He makes the right call. He does something brave that he needs to do. So like, mm-hmm. yeah, I think pretty clutch. Yeah, uh, he, he. I think he's quite often like the voice of reason in a lot of situations but anyway yeah good stuff we eventually knocked that out in an hour and 40 minutes um (laughs) thanks for listening this is like two episodes worth so feel free to break it up into chunks um i might just put like a little warning at the special (laughs) beginning of the episode episode. special guest episode the first time we've ever done this yes Uh, it's not (laughs) Nearly, we thought that the Marvel episodes were the longest we'd ever do, but dang, we knocked out an entire TV show. And we have, we have like another hour of content to talk about if we wanted to. Yeah, I I was (laughs) really prepared and like, I knew that this was going to be a while. I was Mm -hmm. like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit on this. (laughs) (laughs) Could always have a follow up if we want to. Oh, yeah, if you really want, I kind of want to finish the show first. Though. We gotta do. Even though I've had the... it spoiled a little bit, but that's okay. Yeah, I was. Wondering about that. I mean, I'm. I'm Just gonna don't watch think it. about it. We'll yeah. do. We'll do. We'll come. I want to see it. how it comes about. We'll come about. We'll come back to it when we watched after we watched the the movie. <laughs> the live action. No, movie. no, <laughs> please. <laughs> I've heard it's bad. It's so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. Well. This show ain't bad, even though it's long today. But it kind of is sometimes. My bad. Yeah, whatever. Nah. We do our, we try. We are, we, we're doing our best. Though. Yeah, with what we got and well, the two listeners we have. Thanks for listening. Listeners. Like, share, subscribe, thanks for follow. Faith. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for your sticking with it. Like, share, follow, subscribe, do all the things. Email us at palladium, the palladium papist at gmail.com. Do the cool stuff. We like you. Thanks for listening. This is way too long. I Bye. like you too. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. I speak oh, yeah. for the people. Arrivederci. Bye. Goodbye.